One, two, three, lift! Oh! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I've never cooked with coffee before. Uh, All right. With a small infant daughter, I have a very intimate relationship with coffee. My mind is racing to figure out what am I gonna do? Hi there, Becky. So you got uh, sweet, so what are you cooking? I'm gonna do a dark chocolate and coffee eclair. And you're gonna be making a shoe pastry? Yeah, that's, that's a me, tricky yeah. one to make. Yeah, I didn't use a recipe, so it might not work. You didn't use a recipe? I know what it looks like, so hopefully it will work. Fingers crossed it all goes smoothly. Keep an eye on the clock. I make shoe pastry quite a lot at home. I mean, I find it pretty easy, but <laughs> some people have a really hard time. I know what I'm doing, I'm not stressed, so. Chip. Ten more minutes left. Ten more minutes. Great coffee dish. Oh, God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. Becky, it looks like she's done, finished. She is unflappable. It seems like nothing rattles Becky. She's always in the zone. Becky might have enough time to actually make herself a cup of coffee. I've got a coffee-crusted steak pureed celery act, coffee, and a little uh, condensed milk. Those flavors work so well together. The smoked Jerusalem artichoke, the seasoning on the beef, competition has begun. It's coffee and dark chocolate eclairs. The recipe you used was right off the top of your head. Yeah. For a classic shoe pastry, something that pastry chefs work relentlessly at to perfect for years. Yeah, I just did it by eye. That's pretty impressive, I would say. Let's take one of these, open it up, and see how it looks from the inside. Look at that. Pretty full in there. The pastry cream is incredibly soft. And you have a good balance of coffee in there, and that dark, bitter chocolate works really, really well with it. Watch out behind you. Incredible. The coffee flavor just pops. The pastry cream is beautiful, smooth, and velvety. It really is incredible. Thank you. All right, guys, let's keep chatting. I'm very concerned about the red team. They need to start cooking this chicken in the next 20 minutes. Otherwise, they're never going to have it ready. I'm going to start rolling. Becky's going to start rolling. OK. Jonathan. Hey, uh, is the chicken cooking? It's going to be in there in just a minute. Just a minute. You only have one hour left, OK? OK. One hour left. The chicken is not cooking. Chef Elvin is shocked and quite concerned that there is no chicken cooking at this point. I'm feeling a little anxious. Do not feed these people raw chicken. It's taking too long. Come yes, on. Chef. You got to go faster. Come on, faster, faster. We have a lot to do. Come on. 30 minutes, Chef. 30 minutes left. Let's get it done. You guys are doing awesome. Let's keep it up, OK? The servers are coming in 30 minutes. We need to have it ready. You know, Kagan continues to leave a mess, uh, just an absolute disaster zone wherever he goes. That's now leaving the blue team with way less space to do their plating. Guys, as soon as we're all done, let's tidy up so we can just pump the plates out. Clean that front station if we can. I turn around, and it looks like a Tasmanian devil has run around our kitchen. It looks disastrous. 101 Habitat for Humanity volunteers and their families are being served lunch. I feel privileged to be cooking for these guys. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Where's the greens? Where are the greens? Greens, greens? I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, guys, hurry up. The servers are waiting. The servers are waiting. But the red team has fallen badly behind in their plating. We're ready at a Swiss shard, and there isn't any more in the kitchen. We're going to have to improvise here. I'm going to have to go kale. Try not to be too messy, guys. Service is up, thank you. Just take a deep breath, we're doing all right. There's no rice, There's no on, that rice on that plate. Finish hard here, guys. I know it's not perfect, but let's finish hard. Thank you. We're done. Done? Was that ever fun? This is a replication challenge, and you're going to have to recreate this highly elevated version of a classic dessert. I have never made a cake like this before in my life. I'm most worried about the sponge cake, because that needs to be done right, and it needs to go in the oven basically immediately. Kagan already has his cake batter in the oven. I am so shocked. I'm doing this for my boyfriend. He puts up with my messiness, and he loves me for it. 
I feel really good about baking right now. I'm calm, I'm in my zone. I feel like I have a good handle on things right now. I realize that I'm in a good spot and I should start getting my cake ready to assemble. My cake tastes like stale bread. I forgot the sugar in the cake. He didn't put sugar in his cake. Oh. An unsweetened cake is not good. Keep going, Kagan. Take a breath. I'm gonna soak it in cream and sugar and throw it in the oven to try to toughen it up. Not a bad idea, right? I can make a simple syrup and try to infuse some of that into the cake itself. Like he's soaking his he's cakes? He's soaking his cakes. He's just ruining it. Uh -huh. Oh, he just dropped, he just dropped. Right now, I'm not handling the pressure well, and I am no longer going to be able to make a four layer cake. But I'm not ready to go home. I never thought I would be here. It's a dream come true. I have three layers left. Buttercream is sweet, the ganache is sweet. Let's make something tasty for the judges. I'm glad to see that you're uh, pushing on. Tell me what happened. I didn't put any sugar in my cake. How have you tried to remedy I this? I tried issue? to add a little sugar to the cake. As a sugar syrup? It's not a bad idea. Well, as long as it's not too wet, it could hold together. Is the cake itself nice and cold? Because your pastry cream is starting to soften already. This cake is too hot, so I put them in the chiller. They have less than eight minutes left. At this stage, all of the cooks should be placing their cakes on the pedestal and starting to assemble their Black Forest cake. But if you assemble on the turntable and then try and lift onto the pedestal, you could be in trouble. I look behind me and everyone is a step behind. So Reem is ahead now in the assembly process. What a comeback. Not getting eliminated. My cake just crumbled into a bunch of chunks. Those two sponge cakes are so wet with syrup, it just started to fall apart. I kind of feel like throwing in the towel. Just don't give up. Please, don't give up. She's right. I didn't come here to give up. I have one layer of cake left, but I feel pretty confident I'm gonna be able to get the flavors right on this cake. You know, flavor is king. It could save me. Nadia, I must say, this cake looks almost perfect. The moment of truth. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That is perfection. Thank you, Chef. The cake is perfectly moist. The muslin cream, it's light, it's tasty, it's rich. Thank you. The ganache. Good consistency. Are you here to stay? Yeah, I'm here to take this all the way to the end. That's why I'm here. Well, I believe you. Watch out, watch out. Kagan. Chef Claudio. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm impressed that you got to this point because I thought for a moment there you were gonna throw the towel in and just give up. What did we call this? We call this humble pie? <laughs> I called it uh, budget cake. Budget cake. Yeah, can't all afford layers. I've got to tell you, in terms of flavor, this is actually the tastiest cake I've had here. I mean it. What? It's balanced. I like the fact that there's not a lot of sugar in the cake because there's already a lot of sweetness happening on top of it. It's actually very balanced. You might be onto something. Thank you. I don't want to go home. I'm not ready to go home. I want nothing more than to be up there in that balcony. Professor Mike is completely drunk with power. I'm not playing favorites. I'm not playing friends. I want to know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. I'm just gaining more knowledge on the home cooks I'm competing with. Which one do you want? Uh, let's try the fresh. I think I'm gonna give you the dried. Nobody would want a canned item. I know that I'm gonna get the can. Thank you. 
I think the canned is going to throw you a bit of a curveball. Cool. Hmm. Enjoy. Do you get fresh? Thanks, buddy. All right, enjoy your cook, everyone. I can't wait to see how this pans out. I just want the mushrooms to shine. Eugene's got all sorts of equipment happening. I'm sure he's doing this convoluted dish. I'm making a vegetarian mushroom bone marrow. Canned mushrooms are a little bit slimy and a little bit wet, similar to bone marrow, where it's fatty and gelatinous. I'm shaping comfy potatoes, similar to bones. My idea is pretty creative. I know that I've got this in the bag. I'm doing a cream sauce with beautiful canned mushrooms in them on a bed of charred up cauliflower, and then a poached egg as well with that. Andy is using a variety of techniques. He is grilling, he is smoking, he is making purees. Interesting for me to know that he does have this in his repertoire. 15 minutes, 15 minutes left to present us with your mushroom dish. Look at Eugene. He seems to be taking a long time with those potatoes. I need to get the potato shaped like bones as soon as possible. We've seen him do complicated before, and it just doesn't work out for him. It's taking too long. I won't have time to redo these potatoes. If I don't get the proper structure, I'm screwed. This might end up being his ultimate destruction. Eugene! Hi, Chef Alvin. You got the canned mushrooms. Is that a bummer? No, I'm very used to canned mushrooms. You know, Chinese cuisine, we <laughs> always get canned mushrooms. I know Chinese cuisine well, OK? And I've used a lot of canned mushrooms in my life. What are you doing with it? So canned mushrooms are a bit wet. They're slimy. So I'm doing the replica bone marrow. It's a very similar texture. You are doing bone marrow with mushrooms. Yes, Chef. You can't. <laughs> Can you? Hopefully, when you taste it, it'll blow your mind. I don't know which way it's going to blow. <laughs> That's a problem. I understand that, Chef. Don't disappoint me. Yes, Chef. I was given a tricky ingredient to cook with, and I stood up and delivered. I'm super proud of this dish. What kind of mushrooms were you assigned? I was assigned, graciously, the canned mushrooms. I decided not to go with any protein and just focus on the mushrooms. So on bottom, I've got a roasted purple cauliflower. On top of that, I smoked an oyster mushroom. And then on top, a roasted creamy sauce using some of the mushrooms, and then poached and smoked an egg. The cauliflower is acting like a protein would act on a plate like this. Exactly. I like that. Wow. Looks nice. Incredible flavor. Bold. Great texture. Honestly, I couldn't tell that it was a canned mushroom by the way you treated it. It's an original dish. You are one to watch. Keep it up. Thank you, Chef. Will do. And I wanted the dish to look kind of like a forest in fall. The bones I made from a potato confit. The marrow is the star of the dish. I'm actually very disappointed when I look at this dish, Eugene. Because I wish I would have thought of it. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Wow. It really is incredibly creative. Innovative. Thank you, Chef Claudio. To take a canned mushroom and come up with potatoes and mushrooms pretending to be bone marrow. It's pure genius. Thank you. I know you know it, too, because I can <laughs> see you're filled with emotion right now. Yeah. The way it looks, it's a triumph. Thank you, Chef. Let's cut through. I'm very intrigued. Wow, look at that. You mimicked a bone marrow. It's incredible. The mushroom is smooth, incredibly rich, very intense in flavor. The whole dish just has complete harmony. I love the fact that you've got these chips here that mimic dried leaves. You're definitely onto something. I am so relieved right now. I'm not really thinking of Michael G, but I guess I could thank him because probably I wouldn't have used that idea if it wasn't for the canned mushrooms. So many apples. With just two hours before their booths open for business, speed and efficiency are crucial. That sounds good. I like that knife skills. He's a ninja. 200 donuts. That is a lot of donuts. It takes organizing, planning, and meticulous execution. Push it, push it, push it. As each team scrambles to make 200 donuts, a crowd of hungry dog owners has assembled. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. The home keep cooks pushing. only have Thank 15 you. minutes left to fill, glaze, okay. and decorate their donuts. Are you ready for donuts? <laughs> One minute, get 
those donuts out! We decided to forego the yolk just because we don't have enough time. Okay, Eugene, seriously. He should have had everything prepared for quality control. Oh. Are you doing this? Yes, I'm, I can do both. pass it over. Be nice, be kind. I am so proud of my team right now. Becky recovered from that early mistake with the dough, and she's pounding out those donuts. Can you run these up, yeah. please? OK, you're going to need that big bowl here. Eugene, we need tops. All right, dogs, tell your owners to fetch now! Who wants bacon? Come on, everybody over to Team Who Red. Who wants bacon? Come on over to Blue. We got plenty ready for you. Who wants some apple pie? Come and get it. It's hot and ready. Can I get you one? One, two, sure. ten. The dog lovers will now choose between the red team's play on a breakfast bagel with orange whipped cream and candied bacon. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. The blue team's caramelized banana donut with chocolate glaze and banana cream filling. There you go, sir. Enjoy. And the green team's apple pie donut with candied bacon and crunchy cinnamon topping. Come back for more. There's plenty. Eugene, how are we doing over there? You guys are running out of donuts. OK, Eugene. The demand is there, and we're running out of donuts. So we're going to get you some fresh ones whipped up right here. Eugene, let's build these, buddy. Let's build these those ones. One. No, those ones are not good. Do not use those. I see the lineup, and all I know is that we need to get these donuts done and ready and served to these people immediately. And a bottom. Bottom. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. OK. There we go. All right, thank you so much. Perfectly cooked rice and onions. Mouth-watering mushroom duxelle. A layer of egg whites. A tender and flaky fillet of salmon. Egg yolks, parsley, and dill. Salmon, cumin, yak, whatever, with seven layers of things is, that's insane. You want every single layer to be uniform. My tip would be make sure you chop everything ultra, ultra fine. Because the smaller, the finer it is, the easiest to form the layer. And I can see right now, Michael G, see the way he's chopping the mushrooms? Wow. Woo! Take notes, I'm coming for you next. It's double-handed. Speed, baby, speed. I have everything to prove. I chose to do this, so I, I can't come out in the bottom, because otherwise I look like a fool. It's hard work, baby. I see Eugene, he is taking much more time chopping up his mushrooms for a nice, even, consistent, fine dice. Those look nice, Eugene. Thank you. It's all about precision. That's awesome. Keep it going. I see Jen seasoning her salmon right now, not on the top and the bottom, but all the way around. Very smart. It's got to be one of the fanciest things that I cooked. Every single layer is distinct, and all the flavors marry together to make this dish what it is. There's a lot of precision involved in this. How are you feeling about things? Feeling great. No regrets at virtually volunteering to be in this pressure test? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. One more chance for me to present food to the three of you. Happy with the outcome? Yeah, I'm very happy with the outcome. Not only do I want to see perfectly cooked salmon, but I want to see six distinctive layers. Do you think you've been able to achieve that? I think so, Chef. You ready to take a look? What do you think? Awesome. I like it. Awesome is not the word that I would probably use. I would have liked the pastry just more tightly wrapped around that salmon, so there's less of a space between where the salmon ends and the pastry starts. And did you season every layer, Michael? I did. You know, it's not perfect, that's for sure. Pastry a tad undercooked, salmon just a little over. Enough to give this a lot of thought. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chef. Hey, Jan. How does it look for you? I think it looks beautiful. I'm very proud of it. To me, it looked kind of 
great. <laughs> because I can tell you, of all the ones I've seen, this one is got to be the closest. Thank you. <laughs> so when they cut into this, what am I going to see? Perfection. Perfection. I see those layers. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. What was in my mind? I think you love it. You no doubt? Oh, yeah. That's right, I have no doubt. <laughs> this tastes fantastic. Thank you. OK? So everything combined together, you got all the distinctive flavor. This is something that your husband would love to taste, right? Absolutely. So you want him to taste it? Oh, he will be. When do you want him to taste it? When I win this. I like that. Thank you. Colville Bay oysters prepared three ways. First, we have a Japanese-inspired preparation, a sake poached oyster with Asian pear slaw with a perfectly shelled lobster claw. I have absolutely no experience with oysters. It's very out of my comfort zone. The next oyster is served raw, but topped with an intricate mignonette, champagne jelly, red tobacco, and chervil. Feels like there's like three dozen things going on in each little teeny tiny oyster. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. The third and final oyster is our take on oyster Rockefeller with bechamel, spinach puree, sauteed oyster mushroom, and a blend of cheese and toasted panko breadcrumbs. This challenge is going to be quite difficult. Not only does it have to taste good, but the oysters have to look as gorgeous as we see them. The home cook who shucks the most oysters in three minutes will head straight to safety oh up in the gallery. God. I want to get on that balcony more than anything. If I can make the most of three minutes, that's all I need. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Come on, guys. Yes, come on. Shuck like your life depends on it. I can't think about time. I can't think about what anybody else is doing. I'm trying to repeat the motions. In, turn, slice, done. Kagan's made a great start. He's got three oysters shucked, opened, and ready. Let's go, Marissa. Marissa's right behind. Let's go, Marissa. Come on, Marissa. Let's go. Let's go. Quick, quick. And Becky's doing well, Becky's too, in the back there. Good. Jan's only got two. Marissa and Kagan are now neck and neck. He's got this one more. 30 seconds. Come on, 30 seconds. Yes, come on, Marissa. Come on, Marissa. Keep Keep going. Going. Yes, Push, go, go, go. Oh my god, it's crazy! Kagan's actually getting faster with every oyster he opens. 10, 9, 8, 7, Push, 6, four, you get 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, heads up! The shucker's down. Wow, very impressive. I have 15 oysters. That was intense. I've got uh, 13 oysters ready. All right. I know I've got more than a couple, so hopefully they all look good enough. I know I didn't do the best, but I did the best I could. First eight oysters I've ever touched in my life. I served eight oysters. In third place, with five perfectly shucked oysters, Jen. And also with five, Kagan. <laughs> That's right, Kagan. Most of your oysters were unfortunately still connected to the shell. I didn't even release them. Um... Becky and Marissa, taking quality issues into account, today's winner on the Oyster Shuck Off, who will go straight up to the gallery, is... Marissa. Marissa, you earned it. Hell yeah, I did it. Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you doing? All right. First pressure test. Nervous? Uh, not really. Not really? So, are you confident? Yeah. But have you ever cooked an oyster before? Uh, no. No? Are you not nervous at all? No. <laughs> Cold as ice. I tell you, don't be nervous, but you should always care. Remember that. Yeah. All right? You're a savage, Becky. Go, go. You're a savage, Becky. 
I want the judges to know that I can handle the pressure. I do have emotions, I just don't show them. The unshakable Becky. It looks like you carbon copied the plate that we showed you. Well, let's see how your raw oyster tastes. The mignonette is expertly done. Good heat, the peppercorns are finely ground. It complements that oyster beautifully. Sauce, good flavor, well seasoned. Great combinations of the cheese, the breadcrumb, and finally that mushroom. This oyster Rockefeller, it's one of the best I've ever had. Wow, Very well done. <laughs> Thank you. Becky, Becky. Becky, you were the only one that had that oyster in the grasp of the pincers of the lobster, as was shown. Mm. Fresh, crisp, and crunchy, the way it should be. Nice seasoning on the lobster claw, but it is, in my opinion, slightly underdone. You're not making it easy. to help you get in touch with your inner greasy spoon. The cast of the smash hit comedy franchise, Corner Gas. What? No way! Most of the home cooks came out with baskets full of food, but Becky, she had merely a handful of ingredients in her basket. I think four grapefruits and half a dozen eggs. She's obviously going sweet. I don't want to see an apple pie. I don't want to see plain burger and fries. This is not the time to be safe. I'm going to elevate pie by not just making the traditional mold. It's pretty much a deconstructed pie. So I'm going to make like a grapefruit pie with basil jelly and meringue. It is pie at its core. It's just completely elevated. Like, look at them. I can't. I know. At this point, I'd be making eggs. I'd be like, and I'm done. <laughs> hey, Nadia, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? I gotta say, Nadia, I'm a little worried. I see no coffee whitener around. I see no paper cups. <laughs> what do we have here? We have like a cheese that is... chamber here. <laughs> what is this? I use some applewood um, smoking chips. Oh, Did you wow. smoke inside of here? Great. I smoked the brie and I thought that would really like elevate it. Oh, you just oh, brought me home. Oh man, that you is amazing. Yeah, that is fantastic. That's legal. <laughs> Looks delicious, and best of luck to you. Impressive. Thank you. I've never had great from basil before, but I think it'll work. Basil goes with most fruit. Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are good. you? Good. No, what are you making? A pie. A pie. <laughs> Could you settle down? The excitement is overwhelming. <laughs> What kind of a pie are you making? I'm going to make a grapefruit curd with grapefruit and basil jelly and a meringue. That's not your average diner pie. The baked pie in one hour, do you think it may be a risk? Instead of a crust, I'm going to do a crumble instead. I baked a pie years ago, <laughs> and it took less than an hour, Alvin. So show a little face. Yeah. <laughs> Go get them, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Becky, I want that pie to jump. Don't listen to a thing he just said. Just ignore it. <laughs> Hi, Eugene. Hi there. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I am making a chicken and waffles from the dirty old south. Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> thank you. My parents owned a diner growing up. Really? I spent a lot of time in the diner. How are you going to elevate the waffle? The waffle, I'm going to end it with a pat of uh, foie gras on top, just oh, like wow. butter that you can spread over top, and it's going to just be nice and uh, moist and buttery. Are you single? I am. <laughs> I wish she was one of the judges. <laughs> good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. One minute, you have one more minute left. I hope my flavors are going to get me called up today. I'm looking at my dish, and it's looking really, really good, but I know it needs one more element. I'm trying to get the meringue a golden brown color without burning it. 20 seconds till order's up! Eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, heads up! Woo! Come on, Eugene. No, it's not happening. What did you do that for? 
Out of the gate, Becky and Eugene seem to be really slow. They're just not getting into the rhythm. It just has to be around the 50 number, okay? Okay, Eugene? I need to keep Eugene on track because he could be doing so much more. Run! Run, Run to where? To the fridge! I've never seen Becky be quite so vocal as this. Eugene doesn't seem to be moving fast enough. Get the weight scales! Weight scales! Switch! Yes, go! Eugene! How's the yeast looking? Marissa's being really quiet. The yeast looks activated, we're good. She's not really giving me a response. I need to know so that when we tag out, I can then pick up where she left off. Marissa, as soon as you're done, we need to chop up the onions. Just watch that clock for me. Marissa and Nadia, I can see them butting heads. I don't have much to say other than work, work, work. Tag team is a great challenge. It really shows us how they work as a team. They have to trust one another. What next, Eugene? Stick it into oven at 100 degrees. Trust and communication is key. You had about 300 of uh, livers, so you need about 150 grams of butter. Yeah. So now Kagan has moved on to the chicken liver, which is an essential part of the bandy. Take a little bit of it out, because otherwise it's not going to set. Michael G is doing an amazing job of keeping me on task. Quick, double time. Spatulas are in here if you need it, but we don't need a ton of it. Run it, run it, run it. Tap the tray as you're going, it'll lock flat. Prep the jellyfish. Okay. Move quickly, Eugene. She's making me move fast. Come on, Eugene. Quickly. Quiet Becky is gone. Get the other piece and slice it in half. You can hear her just screaming at Eugene to pick it up, to push it, and it's fantastic. You only need two. You only need two. Oh, my god. Moment of truth about to happen here. Michael's going to check his pork. Come on, man. Oh, his hands are shaking. Ah. Looks like Michael G has taken his own advice. He's burning his fingers now. Got it, got it. Yeah, Mike. Switch! Switch! Your G! I have so many dishes to prepare in so little time. Oh my god. Marissa is very slow. I don't know if we're going to get all the components on. I think Marissa and Nadia are too far behind right it's now. It's really coming down to the wire. This is it. This is all you, Becky. You got this. Right now, I feel like I don't have any time to do a bananas. Like you broke one in half so that we have two pieces versus just one. It's kind of ingenious. Beautiful. One minute, you should be plating! In the glass jar, that's for the balls. Right in front, right down, in front here, man. Keegan is plating his takoyaki. Other way around. The crappy side on the bottom. 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds left! I take really hot pork, stick it in a really hot bun, and pretty much just launch it onto a plate. Good job, good job, that's good. Ten, nine, eight. You have to get on the plate, let's go, come on. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, heads up! Yes! Come here! Ooh. Kagan. Oh! <laughs> I'm back. Bye, guys. Kagan's back. Congrats. Thank you. It's pretty annoying, but we'll deal with it. It's good to be here. Are you ready to be a valuable member of Becky's team? Absolutely. I'm going to do everything Becky tells me to do. Well, you should, because the losing team today will have to face the dreaded pressure test. Get a little that for the venison. I'm a perfectionist. I want to taste everything to make sure it's going to be good. Bringing you the sauce to taste. OK. I haven't strained it yet. <laughs> More honey? Up. Eugene has, like, a very, he has a very intricate mind. Yes. Yeah, do we have something other than honey? Do you want more balsamic in it? No, no more balsamic. Lemon? I feel as though it needs a little bit more sweet in it. However, uh, not honey. I don't even let it get to me anymore. I know what he's like. I taste a lot of honey in there. You got it. What do you think about that mix? Can I smell? I'm a little nervous about Becky and Kagan working together. When Kagan left the MasterChef Canada kitchen, he threw some shots directly at Becky. I'm going to salt them first and then crust them. Pepper? Just because I need a ton of salt. I have no pepper in here, but I was going to Put some pepper in there. Pepper. So I'm hoping that Kagan's time off, uh, he ate a little bit of humble pie during that time. My role is doing what I'm told. <laughs> 
I'm not forcing my ideas on Becky because my strategy is to help her achieve her vision. He seems like he's changed. He's not like as full of himself. <laughs> totally on good behavior right now. Absolutely. Kate, what's the temperature at? 133. Becky puts me in charge of the duck breast. I came here to redeem myself. I need to prove to myself that I can handle the pressure. Stop touching. I messed up once, and I don't want to mess up again. We got this, guys. Strong finish, strong finish. Blue team, five minutes out. Let's get the plating going. Oh, those look nice. Honestly, the duck is probably the best I've ever done. Beautiful, Kagan. I'm going to get a duck tattoo, I think, when I go home. Yeah. Perfect. I got nice brown on mine. Mine are looking great. Amazing. How are the other ones looking? They're good. They're getting nice and brown. We're doing whatever it takes to make sure this is exactly how we envision. Beautiful. These look good. These look great. And it's coming together. Beautiful, guys. It's a piece of artwork. All right, guys, that's good. Great job, everybody. OK, send them out. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Guys. Team red all the way. That was a sprint. So blue team, the red team is already pushing apps out. They're on their second table already. You have not given me one table yet. Eugene, where are those octopus? They're coming. Two minutes. Four octopus. Perfect. Plate them. Put them down. Octopus down. This is our first plating, and Kagan's already asked me to do the plating instead now. 20 minutes on your first table, Kagan. We're going to pick it up from here. Things are feeling a little bit chaotic. Becky, how we doing? Two more plates, nearly up. Blue team, you got to hustle. You still owe me four octopus. Kagan, you're getting absolutely crushed right now I, by the I red see team. That. I need my team to move a lot faster. They're just yelling, frantically moving. OK, careful. And it seems like they're not actually doing anything. You owe me four more octo right now. Four more octo? There's no clear option for what to do next. Like, I don't know how to fix this. Kagan, do you need help with the octopus? Yes. Kagan, is this finished? Greens. The greens, Kagan, the greens. Kagan. Kagan, they're making me wait for plates, and then they come up, and they're not even that great. The pressure is getting to me. Kagan, team ordering three octopus. Yep. You guys got to hustle now. Do you okay. need help on octopus? I'm There's going no... to start octopus right now. Hey. The octopus dish is way more work than I thought it would be. We just oh, got the order, Becky. Yeah. Don't worry. Every little element takes a few seconds to do. I need that octopus now. Flip that, flip that, flip that. I need help plating. OK. Mike G is a phenomenal captain. I uh, don't like that one. Too skinny. Do it again. He is focused. He's got an amazing plan. He's communicating well. Are they good, You guys chef? are doing a great job. Yeah. Thank you, chef. They're ready for service. Kagan, take a look at this plate. This is your competition. I'll give you a recap. You owe me four tartars, two octo. Four tartars? And your apps are all out. Help us finish these plates. Becky, beautiful plating here. Thank you. All right, guys, great job on the appetizers. And the appetizer around our team has done a terrific job of really owning the challenge. Nice work, Red Team. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Thank you, Chef. We did a good job. Guys, but we just have to be cleaner. Up. Yes. Very hungry. When are you going to give me five bream and one lamb? As soon as we can get the, the bream from over there. Eugene, how many clams are in this pan? I have four on the pan. No, the Eugene, listen to what I'm saying before you answer. It's for five. OK. Becky, are you in charge now? Seems like it. Seems like it, right? Looks like it. I'm having a hard time balancing all of these different things. I can't pay attention to Chef Claudio, and I can't pay attention to the rest of my team. Eugene, we yeah. have two orders of clam and only one fish. OK, four fish are about to come. Eugene, you got that? Kagan, yes, take control. Becky, do you want to take charge? Do you need me to? Eugene listens to you, and you're more composed. Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm excited to be team captain. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. Thank you, Becky. The best chance we have of winning is with Becky at the helm. Enjoy this? Michael. Finally. Wow. All right, Becky, you're doing a great job. Your, Thank you. Your team is catching up now. That was a smart move by relinquishing control of your team and giving it to Becky. It was the right thing to do. I'm like, hashtag Team Becky right now. Just like, yes, you go, girl, yes. Two lamb, Becky, and you are clear. No, Eugene, Tom's up. <laughs> it feels amazing to be in a professional environment. Beautiful, guys. It feels really natural. I'm beyond proud right now. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. Your families and loved ones. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> I see my wife, and I'm so happy.
We've been together since we were kids. She's the most supportive person. I'm so fortunate to have her. <laughs> it's amazing seeing my dad in the Mushroom Canada kitchen. It doesn't feel real. Seeing my sister, it means a lot. When we were young, my older brother got in a car accident, so my parents had to really focus in on him. My sister and I, we became more independent. <laughs> yeah. But if you went through all of that and you're still a family, nothing can tear you apart. I love you. I'm very fortunate to have Navdeep. He's the most loving and supporting and encouraging person anybody could ever have in their life. I can't believe that I have my sister here. Sarah loves life, and she's taught me to love life through food. I'm excited. This is cool. Do you want these? Yeah, grab them. What kind of vegetables? Zucchini? Yes, sir. Do you know what sea asparagus looks like? The what? Sea asparagus? You probably don't know what it no. looks like. That's okay. My parents, <laughs> when they watch this, I think they're gonna laugh really hard. Flour, salt, eggs. My sister doesn't really cut, but um, she's a foodie. She knows her flavors. How about mushrooms? Uh, yeah, dried mushrooms. Anything else? You need something green. Something green. I've got some uh, chives. No, no. I work for my dad on job sites. He tells me what to do. Do we have butter over there? Already? No. Today I'm in charge. OK, let's get the ingredients out. You know, it's one thing to cook for your family, but it's a whole different thing to cook with your family. I can't believe you're here. I can't believe I'm here either. They're working with the same ingredients that they used the first day in this kitchen. I'm really excited to see the evolution of these home cooks. I want to show Jess how my knife skills have improved. Andy, those look beautiful. You only have 40 minutes to reduce that. Maybe we need to start peeling the potatoes right away. Do we have a peeler? Yeah. My strategy is to listen to whatever Nadia says. That's enough, babe. I need you to cut this up now for me. Just cut the florets off of it. No right. questions. <laughs> I am making a stuffed chicken supreme with uh, portobello mushrooms. Oh my god. What? Move. These are all going to cook at different times because they're all in different sizes. It's already stressful being in this kitchen, and now I have Nav here. Just take a deep breath. We're OK. We're good. Keep going. He doesn't cook, but he does take me out to lots of nice dinners. Sorry, babe. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. You're the boss, baby. A supreme grapefruits. That's a new thing I do these days. Ooh. It's either me or my dad who does all the cooking at home. I'm going to do a chicken roulade, beetroots two ways, Roasted butternut squash puree. I'm gonna do the chicken. He's gonna do kind of the vegetables and the jus. Look at her. Look at the girl. She moves like a chef these days. She's just a little baby, but she's all doing all this stuff. It's amazing. Unbelievably proud. Don't stop. Unbe oh, sorry. Unbelievably proud. <laughs> okay, yeah. onions done. Peel some celery. Fiber. Is that just for fun or? Takes the fibers out of it. My signature ingredient is the pork shoulder butt. We're going to be making a braised pork shoulder and lamb shank ravioli with a tomato basil sauce. I am being very ambitious with this dish, but I've got someone with me that I trust and that can handle this. Just what you want? Yeah. We're going to crush this together. How you feeling? Good. You? Good, good, good. Ten minutes. You have 10 more minutes left. 10 minutes. Are you going to start stuffing? You've got 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. There's no time. And Sarah and I still have to make and cook the ravioli, finish off blitzing the sauce, and bring the entire plate together. Getting nervous now. Michael G and Sarah have a whole lot going on, but not a lot of time. OK, this is burning. This is burning. The mirepoix is burnt. They might have taken on too much. I don't want to blow it in front of my sister. The sauce is burning. I'll do the carrots okay. and the celery. Get rid of it. Then immediately, I just said, let's start again. I could use Sarah at my side every time I'm in the kitchen. Do you want to taste this puree? Mm. Does it taste nice? I like it. You know what, Jess? I think this is done. I think so, too. She nailed it. It's a good plan. More salt? Yeah. It's nice to get a second opinion on your seasoning. Salt or anything, do you think? No, I don't think so. It's coming together really well. Like, I knew he was going to do good. Maybe she put some chives in there, too. No. You have one more minute left. Come on. Get everything on the plate. One minute. That looks nice. That looks nice. Beautiful. What else do you need me to do? The caviar on the chip. Can you spread the caviar on? I mean, it looks beautiful. You should be proud. You should be proud. There's a lot of teamwork happening in this kitchen right now. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Fast, 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 fast. I'm trying. I don't want to. Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and up! 
I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> My dog chicken, roulade, beetroot two ways, roasted, butternut squash puree. Wow, this is beautiful. I see real artistry. But you know what is king? Save. This works beautifully. The crispy kale with beetroot, the mushroom, beautiful combination, beautiful texture. Outstanding dish, great teamwork. Thank you. Not only does it taste great, but you have used the beet in different ways to showcase your key ingredient. And who made the jus? You did. You did. That's wonderful. It is rounded, flavorful, has a little sweetness to it. It is the kind of classic chicken jus that you'd expect from a fine French bistro. Well, oh, thank you. Putting out a dish like this, it's pretty impressive. Is she this good as a tile setter's assistant? No, she's not going to make it as a tile guy, that's for sure. Do you want her back helping you or in the kitchen? Which one is more important to you? More important that she keeps cooking, definitely. Here you have braised pork and lamb ravioli with a classic basil tomato sauce, grilled cauliflower, and cherry heirloom tomatoes. It just looks really interesting to me. It's inviting, it's colorful. I can see there's lots of texture. Three oversized raviolis, I yes. love that. It's a wonderful ravioli. I love the flavors of the braised meats inside. The cheese, the pasta is beautifully rolled. Great effort. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. Sauce, it's very nice. Pork, lamb, I like that combination. The cauliflower, I love the way you did it. Very nice. Today is my proudest moment of being on this journey, that I got to really show my family what I can do. <laughs> Trevor Coney. Yeah. Mary Bird, David George, and Eric Chung. This is MasterChef Canada royalty. Holy crap, that's so cool. Hi, hi, hi. Yes. Going, guys? What's up, guys? So, Becky, you get to decide which basket everyone will be working with. We want to start by you choosing the basket that you'd like for yourself. And keep in mind, you'll be assigning that same collection of ingredients to one of your fellow home cooks. It's definitely four very, very different baskets that might trip people up. I'm gonna take this one. What? I won! <laughs> Mary obviously likes baking, and I like baking too, so it just makes sense to pick her basket. Now let's go down the line. Tell us who will be working with each basket of ingredients. I'm gonna give... Eric's basket to Michael G. I haven't really seen him work with Asian flavors, so switch it up a little. My style is Canadian things, root vegetables and lamb and game. Like, I don't know this world of cooking. I'm gonna give David's seafood basket to Nadia. Right now I'm petrified. There is a live crab in there. There is a bunch of ingredients that I typically don't cook with. This could really throw me for a loop, I think. Who else will be getting Mary's baking basket? I'm going to give Mary's baking basket to Andy. <laughs> Andy's not a very good baker. You can't dodge this anymore. Why not show that I can do this, earn my spot in the top three? Let's do it. That means Trevor's Italian basket is going to Eugene. It's a very traditional basket. I'm not too excited by any of the ingredients, but it's my job to elevate it and bring excitement. Andy. Chefs, how are we doing? Great, how are you? Just getting this uh, tart shell ready to rock. You know, you're not a baker. Are you kind of bummed you got my basket? A little bit, but, uh, but in order to win this competition, you got to be able to bake in this high pressure. So what are you making, Andy? I'm going to do a savory tart with mascarpone cheese, some scallions, some beautiful bacon, some boozy pears on the side, and then goat cheese whipped cream on top. Just make sure, I think, to balance like that savory and a little bit of sweet. Maybe? Good call. Just yeah, I like that. What's the biggest challenge for you in this dish? I think it's just surviving. <laughs> it's the biggest <laughs> challenge for me right now. But I'm going to take Becky down on this one. But I'm going to make sure that uh, she knows not to mess with me. And I think that you made a wrong choice today. Well, hopefully you'll pull it off. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. All right, we're going for it. I have zero experience smelling, tasting, eating gooey duck but I've read a ton on it. It's just this long neck clam that is buried in dirt in the ocean. It's kind of gross. 
Hello, Michael. Tell us what you're making. Today I'm going to be making you a uh, Thai green curry with rice, fried gooey duck, and grilled lobster. So you're trying to prove that you can cook Asian today? Yeah, I am going to prove that. I think that's exactly what Becky was after. Have you ever worked <laughs> with a gooey duck before? Have you ever seen one of these before? <laughs> Never. So what are you going to do with it? I'm going to kind of try and turn it into a tempura textural piece. Best of luck, Michael. Thank you very much, Eric. You better deliver. Thank you, chef. Oh. Wow. How you doing, Nadia? I'm good. How are you? What are we making here? So I'm going to do fried crab with some fried tomatoes. And then I'm also going to be doing kale and mustard greens. And crab is the only protein out of the basket that you're going to use? Yeah. I'd use some other parts of the crab as well, because there's really nice white meat inside that top shelf. And that's good cut advice. It out. Just crack this portion here. Just get that off. And wow. Yeah, clean that. that up. Well, that's great advice, David. <laughs> We're going to let you carry on. Stay in the zone. You yep. have a lot to do. Yep. Good luck. Thank you. Is this edible? No. I'm making the meatballs. I'm rolling out the pasta. I'm making sure the sauce isn't burning. There's just a lot going on right now. Eugene, my man, how's it going? Hi, Trevor. What do you got going on here? Pasta and meatballs, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to try to stuff the meatballs inside the tomatoes and roast the tomatoes in the oven. Eugene, are you worried about time management right now? I think I'll just pull it off right in time. We got uh, less 20 than minutes, 20 minutes, and I need minutes to now play here. As well. Good luck. Yes, Good luck, thank Eugene. You. Thank you, Trevor. Take care, bud. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. I'm absolutely terrified that my tart shell is undercooked. Feeling OK? We'll see. I think it's going to go a bit longer. I have to get the tart shell back in the oven and just cross my fingers. We're down to the crunch here. If I don't nail this, there's a strong possibility that I could be going home after this cook. I'm nervous. Baking is a weak spot for me. It's a savory tart with charred corn, candied bacon, mascarpone, and flavored whipped cream. So play on sweet and savory. You received Mary Berg's basket. I think strategically it was a good choice by Becky. She's looking to win this competition. She knows that I'm not a baker. Well, look at this. The tart is beautifully shaped, beautiful golden edges. I would never know that baking is not your strength by looking at this. Thank you, chef. It looks great from the outside. But what's happening inside, that's what really matters, right? Absolutely. You've come a long way. It's beautiful, it's light. The flavors are all really distinct. The bacon, the pear, the tart itself is perfectly cooked. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. Terrific. Light, fluffy cream with some savory notes. The pear with the cheese, the cream, the savory elements. It's a really innovative use of an unusual combination of ingredients. So have you shown us that you could do pastry? I think I have. I think you have too. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Chef. I took that challenge and ran with it. And I delivered. Welcome to... Andy's Halifax Hooker House. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. I have my own pop-up, Andy's Halifax Hawker House. To see the brand, the logo, is really a dream come true. Becky's UK Gastro Pub. <laughs> this poster really reflects the type of food that I want to do today. It's cool. And Michael's Canadian Comfort Lodge. <laughs> this is so cool. That's right. You are designing the menu tonight. Oh. Andy's Halifax Hawker House serves Asian street food with an East Coast flair. Beautiful. Becky's UK Gastro Pub celebrates the best of yesterday and today by taking a modern approach to some time-honored dishes. That's so cool. <laughs> In Michael's Canadian Comfort Lodge, it's all about rustic opulence. That is me. That's so awesome. <laughs> so inspired. That's so cool. Time is uh, not on my side right now. 20 minutes left and all hell has hit the fan. I have way too many things I have not finished. Chef Alvin, how are you? I'm always fine. I'm on this side. How do you feel? Nervous. I feel great about the dish I'm presenting, but it's a matter of getting it done on time. I have a lot of things I still have to do. You want me to get out of here? Sure. Good luck. I took on way too much for this task, and I'm worried I'm not going to get it done. I am a bit worried about Michael Chia. I'll tell you why. I think he spent too much time Frenching those lambs. He did not do his math properly. This is going to be tight. I'm not even in the weeds. I'm in the actual swamp. I am struggling to swim out of this. I need to get back on track. 
stakes of the semifinal are incredibly high. Beautiful. You gotta make sure these influencers are impressed and like your dish, because what they say can make or break you. Okay. Hong Kong's the bloggers and tastemakers are arriving. Holy cow. Pressure. Do not stop cooking. Even though all these people are arriving right now, I just need to not pay attention to them and do what I need to do. I have a soft spot for Yorkshire pudding, and they look perfect. I can't wait to taste it. The end goal is to work in a restaurant, start at the bottom in the kitchen and work my way up until become the best. There's less than three minutes to go before the servers begin to pick up their plates and deliver them to the influencers. It is wildly intense in this kitchen right now. I can hear commotion going on in front of me. I'm legitimately pouring sweat. My plates are not done yet, and I'm not ready for the service to come. I don't have time for this. Yeah. You should all be playing right now! <laughs> Slippery. Sorry. I have to refocus, get organized, and start pumping out plates. He's pushing himself really hard. Push it, folks. Push it. Push it. Push it. 20 seconds in 20 seconds. The servers will be picking up. Come on, Michael. Come on, Andy. Come on, push, 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 push. Service starts now. It's the grand opening of the Home Cooks pop-up restaurants. They better hope their food is ready for its close-up. I'm happy the way mine looks. May the best person win. This is my type of food. It's my family, like, merging into one. I took on a lot with this, but um, I know it's going to taste amazing. You have one hour and 15 minutes to replicate the taste and presentation of these classic desserts. 75 minutes is all I get. I'm crossing my fingers that I can pull this one out. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. This is the most difficult baking challenge we've done in MasterChef Canada so far. This is intense. This is about as intense as it gets. Three iconic Canadian desserts elevated in 75 minutes. I wouldn't want to be in this pressure test. First thing they have to do is to blind bake their tart shell. I'm rolling out my pastry dough and it's sticking to the table. It's breaking apart. Ugh. I flour the surface, I flour the top. It just sticks, tears, rips. I don't know what's happening with it. This is just gonna be tough. But I do not have time to make another pat sucre. Oh, God. I'm gonna take bits and pieces and fill in the holes and make it work. With pie dough, everything's by touch. And it doesn't feel perfect to me, so I just cross my fingers. Woo! So with savory cooking, it's easy just to eyeball and taste. If something's off, you can kind of readjust. With baking, if you're off by a gram, it can change the whole dynamic of what you're baking. So those cornmeal cakes for their blueberry grunt should be going into the oven right about now. So in order to make the corn cake, essentially you fold everything together with whipped egg whites. Need some more. My egg whites are just not stiffening up. I don't know if I have some yolk in there that's causing some issue. I don't know why these things aren't stiffening up. So I pour it out and start over. I'm gonna push through it no matter what. Giving up is not an option. Michael G has started his flourless chocolate cake for his Nanaimo bar. He's ahead right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And he is compensating for his missteps with speed. I'm just looking for what to do next, try to keep moving. Okay, how's this looking? Andy's pat sacre just came out of the oven. It doesn't look good. I look at the tart that it almost looks just like a flat cookie. And frankly, I think I'm screwed. I don't think there's anything that I can do to come back from this. I just gave this competition to Mike G. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. My only strategy for this challenge is just keep pushing no matter what. Come on, come on, come on. I have a little bit of the pastry dough left. I roll it out, put it back in the tart shell, and get it back in the oven. He is really working double time to get this challenge done. I got to admire him, though. When he knows it's not right, he takes a step back and fixes it. 10 minutes! You have 10 more minutes left! I don't want to see any missing element. 
I get that second tart shell out of the oven, and it's actually looking pretty good. That looks a lot better, Andy. Come on, get your custard in there and get it in the oven. At this point, I have 10 minutes left to bake this tart out, get it plated, and get it up there. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Andy's gonna have to leave his tart in the oven to the very last second. Come on. Andy's getting through this with sheer brute determination. You got this, Andy. You can do it. I don't know. There is not a second to spare. Not minutes, not a second. I am moving faster than I've ever moved in this kitchen and in my life. Michael T is having a hard time removing his coconut milk jelly out of the mold. I don't know how to get the jelly out in a perfect square other than try and pull it out from the actual form itself and be able to fry this sucker out, keeping its shape. Looks great, Michael. There are so many elements that they need to cut, assemble, and dress on plates before they can present the three classic Canadian desserts. I am plating the blueberry jam that goes on the bottom of the blueberry grunt. There's a lot of juice and liquid left in it, and I know it's not exact, but it's something, so I just get it on the plate in order to finish the rest of the plating. It's all good. I'm most worried about my tart. I think that my filling might not be entirely set. I'm worried that when the judges cut into it, my filling's gonna ooze out. Five minutes, you have five more minutes. Push, Mike, push. One of these home cooks is gonna find their way into the finale going head to head with Becky. If that doesn't motivate them, nothing will. Serve it in the tin if you have to. Just get it on the plate. A moment of truth right now. How is Andy gonna get that hot tart out of I that case? Yes! Good job, Andy! One minute, remember, all your desserts have to be on the blacktop. One minute! Let's come go, on, push, push, go push, 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 push! Get your meringue on, come on! It's, I can't, I can't. I have no time, and I don't have meringue right now. I don't know what you would call this, but it's not meringue. But there's nothing I can do at this point. I just put it on top of the butter tart and just hope for the best. Oh, oh no, Andy! It's not there. And he's struggling with his meringue. You know, I'm here to help him out. He's a very good friend of mine. Here you go, dude, here you go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Come on, guys. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm proud of you. <laughs> my, 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 Michael. Outside this tart, this looks fantastic. I mean, that's almost a perfect replication. <laughs> Thank you, chef. But. This is the moment of truth, the cut. Well, the filling, it's a little wet. And I'm just gonna check what the bottom is like. It's a tad underdone, don't you say? It's a shame, because the sides here, that's perfect. I'm in trouble. That one simple mistake can send me home. It's that close of a competition. I'm, I'm, this is it. I just screwed up. With a replication, it has to look identical. And I know that this one doesn't look perfect. Maybe more of a distant cousin. Andy, ugh. Tell me what went well. It was kind of the theme of the day. I had to do everything twice. So it was a sprint to the finish, but I'm just happy to have something up here. But are we gonna get a runny feeling? Like mine. <laughs> Ooh, perfect. Interesting. Wow, I am impressed. <laughs> Thank you. So am I. Let's see the bottom. Well, it's actually, it's actually not bad, okay? Maybe a little bit too thin. Let me taste it. You nailed it on the filling. Thanks, Chef. The flavor's all there, nice caramelization on the sugar. It may not look good, but I must say, tastes very good. Thank you, Chef. No! <laughs> Andy versus Becky, it doesn't get more exciting than this. My whole menu is apples and kind of naturey things. I'm using a lot of fall rustic flavors. And I want to demonstrate how versatile an apple actually is. I have a lot of components and techniques to do today, so I have to really push myself and work really fast today.
I cook with my family all the time, so this is just another day in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Keep it going, Andy. I've been really fortunate to be able to travel a lot. Throughout this whole competition, I've been drawing on flavors from my travels. But what I'm doing today is bringing it back home. I want to show the judges not where I've been, but where I'm from. Let's go Dartmouth. <laughs> Look, Becky's about to fry her first bird's nest using parsnip, sweet potato, and potato. Is she mixing all three starches together? It looks like she's doing that. That's not a good idea because sweet potato has a lot of sugar in it, which means that it will burn before the other potatoes are cooked. Becky is, like, really sweating. I think it's starting to get to her a little bit. Oh, Becky's bird's nest looks burnt. I'm just feeling a lot of pressure because I have a lot to get done. I've never seen her look so facile. I've never taken on this much before. I'm feeling very overwhelmed right now. Andy has his lamb loin in the oven, roasting off nicely. His pita chip and roasted eggplants are well underway. Everything he's doing is calculated and precise. Nice, Andy. You're in a groove here. This donair salad has a lot going on. How's it taste, Andy? Really good. <laughs> 15 minutes and 15 minutes left for your appetizers! Becky is already starting to plate her first course. I've never taken on this much before. I'm just nervous about the time. Ooh! Yep, yeah, there. Andy's lamb loin needs to be medium rare. It's very tricky because of its small size. Perfect. I'm so happy. Such a relief. This is looking incredible. Yes. Smells good in here. Yes, gorgeous. Andy's starting to plate now. And Becky, she's already finished her appetizers. 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, the servers will be coming for your entrees. There are elements in my main that take some time. And I'm all over the place. Someone just keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't go over. We got eyes on the cream for you, bud. We got it for you, Andy. This is incredibly intense, and I'm feeling that right now. Andy needs to conserve his energy because he still has another course. Come on, Andy. 18 yeah, minutes. I'm, good. I'm there, I'm there. If Andy lets the stress get him and makes a mistake, there's no turning back. Two minutes! Servers are coming in two minutes. Go, Andy. You're doing good, buddy. Plating is absolutely key. Everything I put out has to be restaurant quality. Incredible focus on these two home cooks. There's a lot of pressure right now. I can feel my hands shaking as I put the puree in the plate. Yes, Becky. These last seconds are completely chaotic. Let's go, Andy. Come on, Andy. Yeah, let's do it. I'm trying to get the microgreens on there just to give it a refining touch. Come on, Andy. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Becky and Andy are in the dessert round of a non-stop three-course cook. I have so much adrenaline, I can't feel how tired I actually am right now. All bets are off. I just get to push these last dishes out. Good job, Andy. Just stay focused. And in the dining room, Chef Claudio's got the dirt on Andy's entree. That's from the hydroponics. It does look tasty, though, and that could save everything. I chose some pine nuts and put them in the jelly core, and they represent the seeds in a natural apple. Brilliant. How ingenious is that? The apple jelly is not set enough, so the pine nuts keep floating back up. It's like a whack-a-mole. I have no idea if this dessert is going to work until, like, the last minute. Minutes left. This will be your last five minutes in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. They're perfectly golden brown. If you have extra donuts, throw a couple of them up here. <laughs> She's just taken a small piece of her panna cotta and doing a little test of her glaze. This dessert has to be perfect. I'm gonna ditch the glaze. I don't really like it. Look, look, Becky just threw away her apple glaze. She's just thrown it out. Wow. No more apple syrup? No. 
too fake, like the color and everything. She has a lot of suspense coming from a 19-year-old. If something doesn't work, she takes it out of the picture. Two minutes, you only have two minutes, minutes left. Two minutes. Two minutes. I know my daughter, she's focused, she knows what she's doing, and she's gonna get it done. So close, I can't believe this is real. I just have a bag of nerves right now. One minute! One minute left! Come on, guys! Hard. The flavors were there. I think I had a good story around my dishes. I did everything that I could. I wanted so badly. And they're both very, very passionate. I might be 19, but age never matters when you're in the kitchen. There's elements of brilliance. There were some flaws. Winning Master of Canada would be the best thing that's ever happened to me. You have to find elements of incredible strength and weigh it up against some of the weaknesses. I think one cook told a story that I want to hear over and over again. I would agree. Canada's new master chef is... <laughs> Becky. <laughs> I'm the new master of Canada. You did it. It's real. You're not dreaming. <laughs> this trophy is going to change like every aspect of my life. I can finally pursue my dream of becoming a chef. Becky, congratulations. <laughs> I've realized that dreams are possible. They're not just dreams. <laughs> I'm not going back to tile setting. I just want to cook in a restaurant. <laughs>